Today, we're going to be taking a look at the unification of Italy. Just as a review, we discussed how um, nationalism can be used as a force for either unity or disunity. Nationalism being when um, people have a devotion to the common bonds, either the language, um, common history, ancestry, rather than uh, loyalty to the monarchy being like kings or queens. So we have to backtrack a little bit and remind ourselves of the Congress of Vienna. So if we recall following the fall of um, Napoleon, the Congress of Vienna met and they really tried to maintain order and peace as well as stability across Europe. And so in order to restore this order, they placed former monarchies um, back on the throne. So this just led to an increase in nationalism. The Congress of Vienna ultimately ignored ethnic groups, specifically in the Austrian Empire. There were different nationalities and groups and minorities ultimately wanted independence. And so we're gonna be looking at Italy and specifically talking about this northern section where parts of northern Italy were split and controlled by France and Austria. And we're going to see how that leads to um, revolutions. So since the fall of the Roman Empire, Italy had been divided into competing states. Um, if you look at this map, you can see with the different colors that these are all different states of Italy. Each state had its own form of government, dialect, and economy. So Northern Italy and Southern Italy didn't really identify with each other. So while Napoleon was in power, he briefly unified these states. But after the Congress of Vienna, these states became divided once again. Um, so in Northern Italy, if we look at um, up over here, we would see, I don't know if we can see it here, but this northern section, um, Lombardy and uh, Venetia were controlled by Austria. And in the middle of Italy, these were the papal states, meaning um, run by the church. We ultimately see how Italy was divided up into different territories. Um, this here being the kingdom of Sardinia. So it's this island here as well as this chunk of territory here. And then there were actually two kingdoms of Sicily. So Southern Italy, that shape of the boot, and then sometimes it looks like the boot is kicking a ball. That was also Sicily. So we're looking at 1852. Italian nationalists looked for unity under the Piedmont Sardinia Kingdom. So Sardinia is here, Piedmont, you can't really tell um, because I have it right here. Um, but this kingdom of Piedmont Sardinia was the largest and most powerful Italian state. So the King of Sardinia, Victor Emmanuel, he called upon um, Camillo de Cavour to be the prime minister. And Cavour used alliances to gain control of the North. Remember, the goal is unification. So again, Cavour wanted to expand into this territory of Piedmont, Sardinia, but there was a roadblock because Austria had that foothold. Here's Austria right here, and we can see how France is here and right in the middle is Italy. So this territory was split. So Napoleon III of France, not to be confused with the Napoleon that we've been learning about already, um, this Napoleon agreed to drive the Austrians um, out of Northern Italy. So Cavour intentionally provoked war with the Austrians, knowing that he would have an alliance with France. So the French and the Sardinian army were able to kick the Austrians out of Northern Italy and Italy was able to take over this territory.
And then we're going to be looking at some nationalists. Um, the first person is uh, Giuseppe Garibaldi. So while Cavour, the prime minister, was trying to maintain and gain that territory in the north, he started calling upon nationalists in the south. So um, we're introduced to Giuseppe Garibaldi, and he ultimately captures Sicily. Again, Sicily is this territory right here, those two territories. Garibaldi then marched after he conquered Sicily. He marched north and he unified um, Italy. He also formed alliances with France and Russia to continue to drive Austria out of Italy. And then finally, um, the, he was able to gain control of the Papal States, which is this middle section. So we see that there's this unification from the south. And then we have um, Cavour, who was able to unify the North. 